please join in singing hymn number 1013, Stainless the Maiden, 1013. Stainless the maiden whom he chose for mother. Nine months she waited, bearing Christ our brother. Think of her gladness when at last she saw him. sick are sighing, threshold of brightness, comfort for the dying. I, she is holding for a world adoring, hope of the nations, Jesus Christ. Christ our brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries as we gather to celebrate the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, on this new year, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, Grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her 
through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading is from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth. Among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. And may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In these last days, 
He has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, there's three things we remember. Let me begin with the first. Today, we remember to pray for the repose of the soul of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who went to God yesterday morning. Pope Benedict XVI was certainly, by some, misunderstood. People often criticize some of the things that he wore. Although I have to say, Pope Benedict and I have a lot in common. He liked to bring some things out of the attic, and so do I. Because one thing about Pope Benedict XVI is you have to understand is that he had a great appreciation for our history, for our patrimony. And in his heart, and I think it should be in all our hearts, to have a great appreciation for tradition. Because, and I said this before, what old isn't isn't bad. What new isn't bad. Our attitudes to either one and the negative, if we think old is bad and new is bad, then we are wrong. History is important. And he understood everything was for the glory of God. All for the glory of God. And if you take his readings and his writings, his heart and his focus was on Jesus. And his encyclical, God is love. And his last words is reported, Jesus, I love you. Benedict XVI was a phenomenal theologian of our time. And he was often, as I mentioned, misunderstood because they referred, many referred to him as God's Rottweiler. But the truth of the matter is, he was anything but a Rottweiler. Anyone who really knew him, and you listen to the stories, he was noble, but he was kind and he was gracious. Words that were echoed by Pope Francis yesterday. That is the true Pope Benedict XVI. And he was certainly chosen at the right time. He did not want to be Pope. I mean, he even tried to tell Pope John Paul II, I want to retire. And Pope John Paul II had one answer, no. And the hand of God, and through the falling of the Holy Spirit, appointed this gentle professor, 
humble professor as Pope. And again, we see his humility when he realized that he could no longer physically carry on the ministry. He resigned the papacy. The first pope to do so in 600 years. And so this Thursday, at 9.30 a.m. Rome time, we will all witness history. Pope Francis celebrating the mass of Christian burial for his predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI. And so may we remember Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in our prayers throughout this week as we continue to pray for the repose of his soul. The two other things we commemorate, well, first, why we're here to celebrate this beautiful solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. Mary, the mother of God. Mary is the new Eve. And I think it's fitting that we celebrate this solemnity of Mary, mother of God, on January 1st, the beginning of the calendar year. Because it was her yes that changed everything. Her yes, she became the mother of our Savior, Jesus Christ. She is indeed the new Eve. And so we celebrate this new year. Now, this particular year is interesting because usually on a Sunday within the octave of Christmas, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, but there is no Sunday within the octave, and this beautiful solemnity takes precedence. So we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Family on Friday. Now, on Friday, I focused particularly on St. Joseph, as he was a model for all men as a protector and a provider. And the one thing also to point out about St. Joseph, as we recalled on Friday, was the gospel account of the angel appearing to him in a dream. And he responded and he listened to the dream. Yes, he listened to the voice of an angel that appeared to him in a dream. And he responded. He listened. All of us guys should follow his example in that. Listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And he provided for his family. He held a job. He held a trade. He was a carpenter. He built things. So he provided, but he also protected them. He took his family protect, to protect our Lord and Savior from Herod's pride, his greed, his desire for worldliness and power. Joseph protected Mary and Jesus by fleeing the persecution, which we recalled on December 20, as we, 28th, as we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And so we have Joseph. And Mary provides and protects also. But she does so through the two ends. She nourishes and nurtured. She nourished, she cared for the Lord, and she nurtured him. She held him. She walked with him when he was sick. Held him. Bandaged up his bruises. 
while he was an infant. So she nurtured and cared for. And so on these two feasts, which we're celebrating back to back, we also recognize the importance of the role of father and mother. Men and women are created equal in dignity, but we are truly distinct. And that is something I know our, sometimes our culture doesn't want to hear, but it's the truth. We are wired differently. And in our world today, we often look for where we're equal, which is okay. I mean, there's certain things. Equality and dignity, and quality and pay, absolutely. But our world is also a constant contradiction because we want to look at where we're special, where we're unique. And you can't replace a father and a mother. Both are equally important. Both provide in a different way. And we live in a world today, my dear brothers and sisters, that is not necessarily supporting the family, not really supportive. We live in a world that is facing a lot of challenges. Families are facing challenges at this time. I know some people that work 12, 14 hours a day. Two or three jobs. But in the word provide and protect, yes, we do work to provide for our family. But there are other ways that we must provide. By our presence. By our time. That is equally important. I mean, certainly every once in a while, working 12, 14 hours a day, and by that, sometimes people work on shifts. If some shifts, you know, work 12-hour a day and then they're off three days, of course, that's understandable in certain fields. But if you're working five days a week, 12, 14 hours a day, then one has to ask themselves, where's our priority? Are we really providing? I mean, every once in a while, it's good to work overtime, especially getting ready for uh, vacations and things like that, of course. And sometimes things go through seasons and, and people get sick and things need to be covered. That's all understandable. But when it's the norm, then we really need to do a serious evaluation of our priorities. Even if that means cutting back, downsizing, Focusing on what's really, really important. Not the grandeur. That's something for us to really ponder and to think about what's really important. As Mary pondered in today's gospel from Luke, Mary kept all these things reflecting them on them in her heart to ponder and to prioritize. That is what we are called to do. Now our world is certainly facing a lot of challenges. And as we jokingly say, in a new year, we make a new year's resolution. We eat our pork and sauerkraut and make our New Year's resolution. But how many of us honestly keep our New Year's resolution? Although there's truth. This is a new year. This is a new opportunity. But I also want us to think about the word renew. The importance of renewing. So if we failed our... um, our New Year's resolution last year, we can renew it again. Jokingly. But there's something we should be renewing. To renew our commitment to God and to renew our commitment to our vocations. That means parents. To renew their commitment to themselves as spouses, 
for parents to renew their commitment to their children and for children to renew their commitment to their parents. That is important today, to renew our commitment. Yes, we face a lot of challenges, but today in a new year, we also focus on new hope. And where is that hope found? And that is what Mary would want us to ponder today. What did the shepherds make known? They may know the message that had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Who should we ponder? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our Savior, to ponder the truth that God is with us and that God accompanies us every step of the way. Pope Benedict's reported last words, Jesus, I love you. That is what we ponder. Jesus loves us. I shared at the last Mass an acronym that I saw for family. It's a good thing for us to reflect on. Forget about me. I love you. And that goes back to our belief and our our faith in mutual submission, humble submission to one another. Something that's very powerful. Loving is and respecting that mutual submission. Forget about me, I love you. Now, we pray for one another, of course. We should do that. I mean, that's why I said there's a balance there. But imagine if we live that. Forget about me, I love you. All of us did that individually. How the world would be a much different part, place. Because that's what, we're, that's what true love is. Loving for the other. Desiring the betterment of the other. As Jesus desired the betterment of us. Through his life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. That is the same love we as Christians, as followers of Christ, are called to do. To follow him. To love as he loved. There is our hope. Trusting in the will of God. If you want to change, to make things better, it begins with trusting in God. And as I reflected throughout this Christmas to allow ourselves to be drawn to the Christ child, to allow us as we pick him up to fill us with his grace, his love, his tenderness, his joy, and to share it in the world. Yes, God has blessed us in his mercy. He's given us the example of the Holy Family. Today, in particular, we focus on Mary as the mother of God and as our mother, And we focus, of course, on our Lord Jesus Christ. As we ponder this mystery, let us go forth today, sharing the good news, reminding the world that he has blessed us in his mercy and that he desires to continue to support and lift us up. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The Mother of God is Mary's greatest title. In humility and faithfulness, she gave birth to her son, the Word made flesh. Let us join her as we come to the Father in prayer. For the church reflected in Mary, that we may faithfully bring forth Jesus Christ in our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples under Mary's care, that in the coming year they may know peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the persecuted and abandoned ones, that they may be consoled by our mother's powerful protection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families celebrating the new year, that they may share the happiness of the family of Nazareth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those visiting our parish this weekend and for their intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed, that God may grant them peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered for the people of the parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people gathered to honor the most holy mother of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 663, O Lord with Wondrous Mystery, 663.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived her only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of the souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count them on the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so they may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We are servants and your holy people, offered your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant able to just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us in this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant them share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for your life. Please join in singing hymn number 676, Remember Me, 676. Remember me when you 
speak what is wise and you walk in my way. Remember me, be my shining word until I come again. Remember me, remember me when you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, remember me, remember me until I come again. When you shine in the dark, remember me. When you search out the lost and you welcome them home, remember me. Be my light for the world until I come again. Remember me, remember me when you eat this bread, when you drink this cup. Remember me, remember me until I come again. When you gather in peace, remember me. When you pray in the Spirit and you lift up your voice, remember me. Be my song of joy until I come again. Remember me, remember me when you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, remember me, remember me until I come again. When you honor the earth, remember me. When you join with creation and you tend my gifts, remember me. Be my gentle hand until I come again. Remember me, remember me when you eat this bread, when you drink this cup. Remember me, remember me until I come again. When you lift the oppressed, remember me. When you challenge the mighty and you give to the poor, remember me. Be my justice for all until I come again. Remember me, remember me when you eat this bread, when you drink this cup. Remember me, remember me until I come again. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, mother of your Son and the mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. First, starting this Tuesday, we'll be offering a Spanish Mass at 6.30 p.m., and that'll be each Tuesday evening. All are invited to that Mass. 
especially if you want to brush up on your Spanish, or to offer constructive criticism of your pastor's Spanish. I can use all the help that I can get and all the practice, so that'll start this Tuesday. Also, just a note that my pastoral January update is inserted this week into this weekend's bulletin along with the January liturgical calendar. I do call your attention to the liturgical calendar for the week of January 23rd. During that week, there will be no morning mass and no confessions. I will be here to offer the Spanish mass on Tuesday evening and the Wednesday night mass, and if necessary, to celebrate funerals. But other than that, I am taking a much needed staycation. I had to confess to my doctor this week. I said, Doc, I haven't been so good. My diabetes is out of control. So I have to make the painful announcement that for next Christmas, forget about me. Forget about the cookies. Because this past week, I did have a couple episodes. So I have to be very careful um, with managing that. And I tell you that, that way, if for some reason I fall over, at least you know what my problem is. Um, But, you know, it's just one of those things I have to keep a better eye on, and I've noticed that. And my body's been telling me to slow down a little bit. So I guess I better be like St. Joseph and listen. Because, and it's okay. I mean, when I say forget about me as far as the cookies, you can remember me in your prayers. I need the prayers. I appreciate the prayers. Um, But, you know... Help me to continue to love you for years ahead, as long as God sees fit. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 1012, Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, 1012. Hail, holy queen enthroned above, O Maria. Hail, queen of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, O ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Spring through which all graces flow, O Maria. Angels, all your praises bring. Earth and heaven with us sing. All creation echoing. Save, save.